Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> this is Professor Abdus Salam Yasin Taha from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani, giving a talk on soft tissue sarcoma of the extremities and trunk wall. You can watch this lecture and other lectures by visiting my YouTube channel using the URL at the bottom of the slide. Soft tissue sarcoma is a diverse group of rare tumors arising from connective tissues anywhere in the body and at any age with a high fatality, fatality due to frequent pulmonary metastases. Due to the rarity of the disease, it is difficult to collect a good number of patients and most studies describe a few cases. Soft tissue sarcoma is ideally managed by an experienced multidisciplinary team in a specialized sarcoma center. These tumors are so rare that a surgeon may see only one case of soft tissue sarcoma per year. Accordingly, such an occasional sarcoma surgeon hardly gains the necessary experience. What about patients who have no access to sarcoma centers? Can we offer them a satisfactory management? In this lecture, six patients with soft tissue sarcoma managed over several years in two general Iraqi hospitals are presented. Relevant literature is reviewed, trying to answer this question. The first case was a recurrent liposarcoma. A 68 years old man presented with huge recurrent masses in the right thigh of three years duration. Physical examination revealed huge lobulated tumor masses of the right thigh extending from the groin to the knee level, soft on palpation, horizontally movable with distended superficial veins and two old scars of previous resections one year and three years earlier. MRI showed fat containing masses reaching the cortex of the femur and displacing but not involving the blood vessels, muscles, or bone. Exploration and wide surgical excision was done. Huge multiple yellow-brown tissue masses almost filling a trolley were removed. The biopsy result revealed a well-differentiated liposarcoma and a microscopic examination uh, revealed mainly mature liposites and some cells with deep staining nuclei and some degree of pleomorphism. The patient had a smooth postoperative course and that was the post-operative appearance of the thigh. The patient after that, after surgery was referred for radiotherapy. Well-differentiated liposarcoma is the second most common soft tissue sarcoma, mostly occurring in the thigh 
followed by the retroperitoneum and trunk wall. Liposarcoma has a known tendency to recur locally as what happened in this patient. The second case was uh, an alveolar soft bar sarcoma. A 26 years old man presented with a mass over the right knee of four years duration associated with varicose veins. The mass was explored and totally resected. And the biopsy result revealed an alveolar soft bar sarcoma. Well, alveolar soft part sarcoma is a very rare soft tissue sarcoma arising primarily in children and young adults. It accounts for 0.5 to 1% of all soft tissue sarcomas. To date, the definitive origin of this tumor remains unknown. The fact that all tumors were located within or close to muscle may support the thesis that the origin of alveolar soft bar sarcoma is myogenic. The name alveolar was derived from a pseudo alveolar appearance with clustered polygonal cells lacking central cohesion as what appears in this photograph. This is a photograph of uh, a micro photograph of the microscopic appearance of an alveolar soft part sarcoma. The disease usually presents as a painless, soft, slow growing lesion that rarely causes functional impairment. It presents at almost every part of the body with a predominance of the trunk and the proximal extremities. Metastases, most often to the lungs and central nervous system, develop in 80% of patients during the course of the treatment. Leiberman et al. provided the first evidence that surgical intervention appears to be the only clinically effective therapy for alveolar soft bar sarcoma. The resistance of this tumor to conventional chemotherapy and radiation makes this type of tumor challenging to treat. The third case was a peripheral a primitive neuroectoderm tumor. A 14 years old male presented with shortness of breath for two weeks and a recently resected mass from the right thigh whose biopsy revealed a diagnosis of peripheral a primitive neuroectoderm tumor. Chest X-ray of the patient showed a moderate right-sided pleural effusion. And the CT scan of the chest revealed a right-sided pleural effusion beside bilateral pulmonary metastases. Tube thoracostomy was performed and drained about 1,500 ml of hemorrhagic fluid. And the patient received post-operative chemotherapy. Well, primitive neuroectoderm tumor is a rare malignant tumor originating from the neuroectoderm 
accounting for 4% of all soft tissue tumors. It is a clinically aggressive tumor with a gloomy prognosis. It consists of primitive, undifferentiated, small round cells and can be divided into central and peripheral a primitive neuroectoderm tumors based on the tissue of origin. Peripheral primitive neuroectoderm tumor can be found in all age groups, but is more common in young children. And this is a photomicrograph of a peripheral neuroectoderm tumor. Peripheral neuroectoderm tumors are often associated with distant metastases and local recurrence following treatment. Due to their aggressive nature, micrometastases must always be assumed to be present and hence all patients should receive adjuvant chemotherapy for systemic control. The prognosis for soft tissue sarcoma with pulmonary metastasis is poor, with a five-year survival of 15% after resection of metastases, as opposed to 65% in patients without metastases. The fourth case was a case of fibrosarcoma. This patient had a solid mass bulging above the right clavicle fixed to deep structures of three years duration associated with shoulder pain in this 55 years old man. Marked varicose uh, superficial veins on anterior chest and uh, right upper arm were uh, evident. Right radial pulse was uh, palpable and chest examination was normal. MRI showed big axillary and supraclavicular masses and the magnetic resonance arteriography showed a highly vascular tumor mass engulfing the right subclavian artery. For a quarter amputation was necessary for this advanced fibrosarcoma, which involved the subclavian vessels and humerus. And due to the close proximity of the tumor to the brachiocephalic trunk, proximal vascular control required a median sternotomy with supraclavicular extension and resection of the clavicle. The patient received postoperative radiotherapy. Fibrosarcoma is most commonly seen in persons aged 30 to 55 years. It has no characteristic clinical findings, but pathologically consists of elongated fibroblast-like cells arranged in a uniform fasciculated growth pattern. The fifth case was a, a, a recurrent liposarcoma of the trunk. In these uh, uh, fo photographs, we see chest wall masses uh, protruding into the thoracic cavity in a 
47 years old man. The uh, chest wall masses are uh, clear on the plain X-ray as well as on the CT scan of the chest. Over 18 years, the patient underwent nine operations for a section of recurrent, well differentiated liposarcoma of the wall of the trunk. The first operation section was done in 1994, while the last one was done in 2012, followed by radiotherapy. And this photograph shows the resected uh, liposarcoma masses from this patient. Well, both cases of liposarcoma presented uh, in this uh, uh, lecture exhibited characteristic uh, findings on MRI in the form of uniform fat uh, uh, appearance and typical histopathological criteria in the form of mature fat cells with scattered uh, lipoblast. And this is uh, in contrast to the uh, ordinary adipose tissue without lipoblast seen in lipomas. So the presence of the scattered uh, uh, lipoblast uh, differentiates liposarcoma from the ordinary lipoma. Liposarcoma has a known tendency to recur locally. Surgery alone for soft tissue sarcoma can be followed by local recurrence in 40% of cases. However, 90% local control rate can be achieved if radiotherapy is added. Local recurrence was observed two to eight times in our liposarcoma cases. However, addition of radiotherapy prevented local recurrence in both cases. Liposarcoma has a good prognosis with a 100% five-year survival. <clears throat> the last case was an aggressive fibromatosis. This is a CT scan of a 24 years old male patient with a big solid mass in the left axilla and sub uh, scapular region fixed to the trunk wall of three years duration. Uh, the CT scan reveals a well differentiated uh, soft tissue mass, about 9.3 by 8 centimeter in size in the left axillary region. A prior fine needle aspiration and cytology was inconclusive, whereas an incisional biopsy six months earlier showed features consistent with low-grade fibrosarcoma. The patient was explored via a direct incision over the mass. There was a big hard mass attached to the nearby muscles and the scapula, but not invading the chest wall. It was completely removed. The mass was 15, by 12 by six centimeter in size. Histopathological examination revealed features of aggressive fibromatosis. And this opinion was shared by two consultant pathologists. Dysmoid tumors, the other name for aggressive fibromatosis are fibrous neoplasms 
arising from the musculoaponeurotic structures throughout the body. The term dysmoid is derived from the Greek word dysmos, meaning tendon-like. The cell of origin of dysmoid tumors is the fibromyoblast. The synonym aggressive fibromatosis describes the marked cellularity and aggressive local behavior. These tumors account for 0.03% of all neoplasms and are more common in persons aged 10 to 40 years with a higher rate of female involvement. These small tumors tend to infiltrate adjacent muscle bundles. And this is a photo micrograph of uh, dysmoid fibromatosis. And this table summarizes the details of our six cases. The incidence and clinical features of soft tissue sarcoma. Mariti Nielsen et al. estimated the incidence of soft tissue sarcoma to be 1.4 per 100,000 populations. Although soft tissue sarcoma may occur at any age, it is mostly a disease of 40 to 70 years adults. Connective tissue anywhere in the body, such as the pelvis, retroperitoneum, head and neck, trunk and extremities can be the site of origin of these tumors. Apart from synovial sarcomas, soft sarcoma usually present as a painless mass. Pain, on the other hand, is a common feature of benign soft tissue tumors, such as angiolipoma and schwannoma. The diagnosis. MRI is the favored imaging technique. Other options include computerized tomography or ultrasound, depending on the local skill. Tissue diagnosis can be obtained by core needle biopsy. However, an incisional biopsy may occasionally be needed, and excisional biopsy may be the most sensible option for superficial lesions smaller than five centimeter. The biopsy should be designed in such a way that the tract can be securely removed at the time of definitive surgery. Fine needle aspiration cytology is not suggested as a primary diagnostic modality, although it may be helpful in confirming disease recurrence. Histopathology. The histological subtypes of soft tissue sarcoma is important in selecting chemotherapeutic agents when needed, as well as in predicting the prognosis of patients. Investigators found that the best indicator of a tumor's biological behavior and the strongest predictor of metastasis and fatality from soft to sarcoma is tumor grade. Whatever the histologic type of soft tissue sarcoma, all are positive to vimentine, a marker of connective tissue origin, but negative to cytokeratin and epithelial 
membrane antigens, which are markers of epithelial tissue. And the take home messages of this lecture, the clinical features of soft tissue sarcoma are variable due to their different size of origin. However, it is recommended that any patient with a soft tissue mass that is increasing in size, bigger than five centimeters, or is located below the deep fascia, with or without pain, should be referred to a diagnostic center as a suspected case of soft tissue sarcoma. Imaging is vital in the evaluation of patients, and the preferred modality is MRI. Tissue diagnosis, on the other hand, can be obtained by a core needle and or a well-planned incisional biopsy. Wide surgical excision with limb preservation is the backbone of soft tissue sarcoma therapy and amputation is occasionally required. Radiotherapy can reduce local recurrence in low-grade soft tissue sarcoma, while chemotherapy is used for certain histologic types such as rhabdomyosarcoma in children and synovial sarcoma in young age groups. Well, this uh, lecture is based on uh, a previous publication. I have published uh, this paper, how satisfactory is management of soft tissue sarcoma out of a sarcoma center, six case experience in the Journal of Neurological and Orthopedic Medicine and Surgery, which is the uh, official journal of the American Academy of Neurological and Orthopedic Surgeons in the year 2017. And these are the references of the article and the uh, by references for uh, our presentation. And with this nice photograph of the Tigris River in Baghdad, I thank you for watching the lecture. This is Professor Abdusalam Yasin Taha signing off from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani.